here we are again. And there is a big, big, big misunderstanding on what is, what constitutes a heavy duty sewing machine. Okay. Here I got a singer, Aretha. Okay. Right there. Here's all these stitch patterns. And it's pretty light. See, it probably weighs about 10 pounds, maybe, if even that. I could pick it up with one hand. And here is a Foff 463. Okay, industrial size sewing machine. They call it industrial size. Now, does industrial means heavy duty? No. It does not. This machine cannot sew any more heavier fabric than what this machine can. You know, you, you know, you look you look at it, this is plastic. Most of it is plastic. This is all metal. Everything in here is metal. You got one you got one nylon gear in there, which I replaced. Okay. But everything in this Foff 463 is all metal. And you cannot pick this up with one hand. It weighs about 80 pounds. Okay. Then over here, excuse the mess, by the I just got done doing a couple of sewing projects and I have, instead of putting stuff away from one project to another, I just move it out of the way. But anyway, then you have here is this, um, this Yamada, but this here is a heavy duty sewing machine. Okay. Why is that? Because of this right here. You see this? That's a walking foot sewing machine. And if you look around the side, you can see the mechanism that operates the walking foot. Heavy duty sewn machines, if you want to call heavy duty, is is the is the is the capability of a sewing machine to take fabric and pull it through and sew on it. Okay. Um, let me demonstrate what this does. Okay, let me sh show you how this would work. Okay, this is a walking foot. See how that outer, the outer two feet, they grab the fabric and they and it pulls it back. Then it goes forward and it pulls it back. Okay, so so not only is your bottom feet moving, it's also grabbing fabric from the top, and this acts like an upside down feed dog, where it sandwiches the fabric and it pulls the fabric in a in a, in a sandwich mode. Okay, and right now I got my hand on it, and see how it, it's pulling underneath my hand. And look at my look at my fingernails, how white they are. Look at the fabric being pulled, and I am pushing down on it as hard as I can. And see, it's it's still feeding the fabric. Now, of course, it's it's bunching it up. It's gathering up, and uh, and that's how you would. You know, if you want to do <laughs> do a quick gathering on your sewing machine, you just hold the fabric down tight to where it could gather like that. You know, if you need a little bit of gathering, that's one of the little sewing tricks. Okay, but you see how hard I couldn't I could not just by putting my hand on it and pushing on it hard enough, I, it still fed through underneath my fingers. Okay, now if I grabbed it like this and pulled on it. Uh, I probably would break the needle or bend the needle some way where it would, would, you know. But anyway, you see what I mean, though. I pushed down on it, and I could not stop the fabric from being fed through there. Okay. So which means that ever how thick your fabric is, like I could, I could sew that thick of fabric where my finger is, you know, about as thick as my finger, 
I could sew that much fabric because it will pull it through the machine okay that's the strength of a now this would be classified as a heavy duty sewing machine now we have this 4463 industrial sewing machine just like the other one that with the walking foot that would be classified as a as an industrial sewing machine also but it's also classified as a heavy duty sewing machine this sewing machine is not classified as heavy duty it's just classified as industrial because it it's it, it could do industrial work now I'm going to do the same the same uh, procedure. I'm going to show you what this okay. See, I got my foot I got my foot foot my uh, pressure foot down. I'm going to sew a little bit. Now I'm going to put my hand right there, and I just the weight of my hand. You can see the fabric is not moving. Okay, the fabric is not moving at all. Because the feed, the, 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 there's hardly any feed, the dog feed in here are non-existent, basically. See how, see how small they are? There's the width of my finger. And you could, and you, know, you, you, you could feel their brand new dog feet, our dog feet, our feed dogs. But that's the only thing. And this top foot, it just sits on top and doesn't move. So the only the only thing that's that's trying to pull the fabric is the bottom feed is the bottom feet or the dog the the, do, the bottom dogs. I don't have any thread in here, so this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. See now, but does what this machine is made for, and what it could do all day long, and not hurt itself, and this is why it's called an industrial sewing machine, because it does this. Okay, it's a high-speed sewing machine. It sews 4,500 stitches a minute, and this is only um, set for 2,500 uh, stitches per minute. Okay, because I had it, because I have it geared down because when I do um, um, Cordero and 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 the stuff I make, I make s smaller stuff. I don't need it to go to like a length a sheet like a bed sheet length of material so I don't need that speed okay that's what this machine does all day long and that's why it's called an industrial sewing machine because it could it that's it was set up for industrial systems to where it's because it has a self oiler okay and let's see here let me go backwards here let's see and there's something smoking up there must be oil some oil on there that are that's uh but anyway that's what this machine does it's an industrial sewing machine for high speed sewing only on materials like this like this i think this was an old sheet okay and that's what it's made to sew on and that's what it's made to sew denim yeah you can sew denim the needle the punching power of the needle could go through denim. Um, it has the same punching power as that Yamada, as that walking foot sewing machine. It, it could sew through the same thickness of material, but being fed, you know, but can it feed that heavy denim? No, you have to actually help it when you sew on denim. So your stitch length, your stitches will be... Um, be different sizes because ever how fast you help feed the machine is how is, 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 is you, would be determine your uh, stitch length okay so this is not a heavy duty machine it's an industrial machine and it's made to sew fast
but it's not heavy duty, okay? Industrial. This, on the other hand, is a sewing machine. This sewing machine could sew the same material as this machine, but it cannot sew. It cannot sew fast or for the length of time like this machine can. This is made for like you're you're hemming up curtains for the kitchen, sundresses, aprons, your home projects. That's what this is made for. Okay, you want to sit down and 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 make you know, uh, lightweight blouses, you know, um, anything like that, anything, any material that, that is, that's, that's, that is not denim. Okay. This could sew denim, but again, you're going to have to help it feed it through the machine. If you're going to sew anything, if you're going to sew any more layers in three or four layers of denim, which means that making a denim jacket on this thing, you're really going to push it, okay? Making a denim jacket on this thing, it's not going to hurt the machine, but you're going to have to do all the work to feed the fabric through the machine because the dog, because the feed dogs on this machine are smaller than what this machine has. See, this, this machine right here, it has twice the feed dogs, twice the area of feed dogs, than what this machine has, okay? Let me take this out of here and put this fabric over here and see what we got. Okay, now I, get, now I have this Aretha set up and I'm ho now I've just got the weight of my hand on there and, and, the, and it's not even, and it's not even, the fabric's not even moving. Just the weight of my hand. Oops. Messed up. See, just by the weight of my hand, the fabric's not even moving. And that's it, full speed. I got my foot all the way down. So. So there you have it. Okay. home home use machine made for sheet material bed sheet material sundresses aprons just short of denim okay it, this is a good quilting machine okay it does a good quilt but it won't quilt the quilt but it but as far as the quilting material the quilting fabrics it does excellent with 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 uh quilting fabrics but to put the batting on and the backing on the naturally this machine you're not you're not going to even attempt to do that with because like i say you need a walking foot machine for that so this machine this machine's in the same category about the material could be used this one is set up to to, to so high speed like we've seen before. General household use and heavy duty uh, sewing machine. Matter of fact, I never even seen. I don't know how this. Let me see if the speed of this is. Okay, here we go. Now let's see how fast this thing could sew. Um, I don't have it. I think I got it set for the, the motor is set for the slowest setting, but this machine, I think it was only rated for 2,500 stitches per minute where that Foff behind me was rated for 45. So is the Singer 281. So let's see. That's about it. Okay. That's about as fast as you're going to get with this. I think I set the motor up a little bit faster, but the way it, the way this is set up, it's set up for more of doing upholstery work and that type of work to where your outside stitches, you know, you need your outside stitches to look nice, top stitching to look nice. So you need you need to have you need to be able to sew 
spot like that to really control your 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 neatness of your th top threads and stuff. Okay, but like I say, if it's not a walking foot, it's not a heavy duty machine. Okay, the Zuki's eighty seven hundred. They're like the Faw four sixty three. They're not a walking foot sewing machine. They're a high speed sewing machine. So it could only sew anything anything under denim, okay? It seems like denim is a cutoff point. That's what I would use it as denim for. If I was going to make a leather jacket or leather or a denim jacket, uh, repair blue jeans, I would want to have a sewing machine that's a walking foot. And you could get portable sewing machines. Like this, like this singer Aretha, that would be a walking foot. Sailrite makes one. Um, Tough Soul makes one. They're about the the less expensive ones. Uh, are you know about four hundred dollars, but those are a heavy duty sewing machine. They're all metal. Um, they're made to sew leather. You know, and you could even sew leather with them, make wallets and stuff. But they're portable. They are they look just like this. And they got and they have their self-contained motor. But they're a walking foot sewing machine. I can't stress that anymore. If it isn't a walking foot, it's not heavy duty. It's, it's that simple. And those old... Um, there's another th th misconception about the old vintage machines made in the 60s and 70s and stuff like your Foff 230s and your um, um, Singer 319s. You know, Google them if you don't know what they look like. I got two of them, two each. They're in my storage unit. I don't even use them because they are not a heavy duty sewing machine. This machine could do more than what a Foff 230 can. It could sew heavier fabric than what the Foff 230 or the or the Singer 319 can. This is a better sewing machine than the Foff 230 or the Singer 319. Okay. Yeah, the Singer 319 and Foff they got those big heavy cams in there. Uh, they you know those things weigh a ton. They're like about 40 pounds. But the reason why they were made so heavy duty like they were back then is because that was the technology back then. You think about it. The only thing that those heavy steel cams do in those two machines, those are the perfect example because they're the mechanical machine of what this is. Okay, This is all controlled by electronics. The FOF 230 and the, and the Singer 319, they are the mechanical version of what this is. They are the mechanical typewriters. Okay, um, are the, um, you know, so you see how heavy the mechanical typewriters were, were back then. You see how robust that stuff was made. And all it had to do was to move, move your typing keys up and down for the shift and stuff for you to type a letter. Okay, now look at the, and then you go back to the electronic, to the electric typewriters and look how robust those things were made. Now you go back to the computers where you can put a simple lap where you could even type a letter off your iPhone, send it to a computer and you could print out a whole letter off your iPhone. Okay. So what is, so what's more practical? What, what's more robust, your iPhone, those old mechanical typewriters that need to be sent in now and then to be adjusted, those old electric typewriters that would eventually, you know, the, the uh, key contacts would go bad. And you you would miss a letter or two. And 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 they and they did the same thing, you know. They they cannot do any more than what an iPhone could do. You know, there's old mechanical typewriters, old electric typewriters, to versus your iPhone. You could you know, same thing with this same thing with this sewing machine. This machine the sewing machine could do it could sew the same the same weight of fabric, punch through the same thickness of material as your DeFoff 230s and your Singer 319s with ease. 
all I have to do is push a button to change to change my threading. Okay. If I want to use do this one, just push this button, and there it is. There, that's all I got to do. I don't have to change cams. I don't have to do anything. Okay. All I got to do is push a button, and not only that, since this isn't a mechanical thing where you have springs and cams, the needle will return to zero. This needle will return to zero every time. So your patterns uh, are going to be a lot sharper with this sewing machine than they are with the 319 or the FOF 230, okay? Because since they're mechanical, they, you know, like old mechanical, um, those old mechanical typewriters, when you hit the shift button to, to make a capital letter, then you let it go. Sometimes it doesn't, the, the typing bed doesn't fall down to where it was originally. Then you have letters that are higher than one another. And then when you make another capital letter, you go to shift to raise it and you go back down again. It goes back down to where it was originally. And now your letters are back to where they were. So, so that's why the old mechanic, that's why you see letters, old, old letters on old typing machines when they use capital letters or not. After the capital letters, did the, 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 did the uh, typing bed fall down to the original point of zero? No. And that's why the letters are never, are never even. On, on on letters typed with mechanical typing in the same you know with the mechanical typing typewriters same thing with the 319s and the FOSS 230s as an example those are all mechanical machines and the and these thread patterns aren't going to be as sharp as it is on this as it is on this Aretha okay so don't think that just because they're they're you know they're all steel they're you know, they weigh 40 pounds and everything in there is made out of these massive clunky steel cams. Does it make it a stronger sewing machine? It's not. It, this machine here has a stronger motor than the, than the 319, than the original 319. Uh, even, I think the, two, the FOF 230 has a 1 amp motor and the 319 has a 0.3 amp motor, if I remember right. Okay, so... If you're looking for a sewing machine, go to Walmart. Stay away from the Singer 4423s and 4420 series. That is classified as heavy duty that you're going to pay $230 for because there's nothing heavy duty about those machines. They're the exact same machines as any other that, that, that same type of machine. Okay? They're only doing that so they can get double the money for the sewing machine. They're not heavy duty because they're not they do not have a walking foot, okay? So, but yeah, but like I say, those old old sew machines back in the in the in the in the fifties and the sixties, when they came out with with thread designs with um, thread patterns where you have to change cams and stuff, they're 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 exactly like an old mechanical typewriter. Yeah, they they were. They were the best of what they were. That's all they had back then. Of course, they, you know, everybody praised them and, you know, oh, look what they could sew or that. Well, that's all they had. And they, so they had to struggle with it. Okay. When they, no, no doubt, when they sewed anything heavier than, you know, up, up to denim, they actually had to help feed those machines because they don't, they feed the exact same way as these do. If I, if I take my 319 out of storage, I got it on a storage unit, I could hold the fabric with the weight of my hand and it will sit there just like this did, okay? Same thing with the uh, uh, Singer 319 and I got both. I got a Singer 319 and I got two FOSS 230s, okay? Same thing. You could put your hand on the fabric and the fabric's not gonna move. Just the weight of your hand will stop the feeding of the fabric. The the motor will, you know, if you, you sew two, three, four layers of denim on those things, um, they're going to stall out, okay? You're going to have to help the needle to penetrate that. So, but like I say, you, it, it was the technology back then of why those machines were built like they were. 
They weren't built to like a like a shit brick house. No, they weren't. They were just built that way because that's the only way they knew how to make that stuff work. Because if you think about it, all you're doing is like when I when I switch here. Uh, let's see here. See the needle move. Okay, you see that. That's all you need to move that needle. It's just these electric servos, okay, in there. But but back in those days, they didn't have this electronic technology. The only way they knew how to make that needle move was to put those heavy cams in there with those heavy springs and those big levers. Mechanical typewriter technology. That's what that that's what those machines were built under. Mechanical typewriter technology. So when you buy those old sewing machines, you're just buying an old mechanical typewriter. Okay, that's all you're doing. So stay away from the vintage sewing machines. If you, if you, if you, you know, if somebody in your family wants to start sewing, and give them their first sewing machine, giving those, just because you can get them, you know, hell, you could buy these new ones cheaper, and they're they're ten times better machine. Um, you know, give them one out of Walmart. Give them the seventy dollar brother machine that's out there for seventy bucks. But if I was to get, but if somebody in my family wanted to learn how to sew, I would give them one of those the older sewing machines that are that are really the uh, Singer two hundred ones and stuff, and then they could really see the mechanical workings on how a sewing machine works mechanically. And uh, and then they could now once you learn how a sewing machine works through the old mechanical ones. Then you could understand how these new ones work. But, yeah. Like I say, they're not any heavier duty than what than what these are. The so-called plastic machines. I would I would put this uh, this machine up against any of those machines built back in the 50 or 60s and 70s, so-called with the steel cases, you know, the steel cases and the and all that other stuff, and then uh, you know, do a sew off and see which one lasts longer. You know, before it before you you have to get make an adjustment or two or oil something or you basically just fall out of adjustment or they are just the clarity of the work, the clarity of the patterns, the neatness of it. So. Okay. Well, anyway, that's all I want. That's all I wanted to say. To stress the point about the difference between the heavy-duty machines, industrial machines, and home machines.